Okay, I'm going to take you through every exam question that's ever been asked about Pythagoras. Now, it's worth noting that Pythagoras does pop up in quite a lot of different places, not just these questions, but these are ones that I felt like Pythagoras was kind of like the main thing that it was asking about. Now, we start with some simple ones, and we're going to get on to some much more challenging ones with circles as well. If you do want to use this document, like I always say in these videos, it is linked in the description. So here we have got ABC as a right angle triangle and it says here is Sarah's method to find the length of BC that we've got here. What mistake has Sarah made in her method? Well, we're not looking for the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is when you add them together. We're looking for something that is not the hypotenuse here. So she should have subtracted. So what mistake has Sarah made in her method? She added instead of subtracting. Let's see what they said in the mark scheme for this one. So they've said that she, yep, here we go, she should be subtracting, not adding the numbers. And they've said she should do eight squared minus six squared, all kinds of things. And these are the sort of stuff that would not be accepted. Okay, this rectangular frame is made from five straight pieces of metal. One, two, three, four, and the fifth one is there. It's a non-calculator question. The weight of the metal is 1.5 kilograms per meter. Work out the total weight of metal in the frame. Okay, well, we've definitely got some easy bits. We know that this is a five meters and this is a 12 meters. This is obviously a five and this is a 12. So the thing that I want to find out is this part of the metal frame that we've got here. Well, to calculate that part, it is going to be the square root of, because it's the hypotenuse, the five squared plus the 12 squared. It's gonna be the square root of the five squared plus the 12 squared. So very quickly, five squared is pretty simple. Five squared is 25 and 12 squared is 144. Now 25 plus 144, if you do a little column addition for that is 169. And the square root of 169, this is something that you should know, is 13, which means that the hypotenuse of this is 13. Now the rest of the question hasn't got anything to do with Pythagoras, but it did start off in that way. So I'm going to work out the total length of the metal. So the length in total is going to be the 5 plus the 5 plus the 12 plus the 12 plus the 13. So that's going to be a 10, a 24 and a 13. 10 and 24, that's 34 and 13. Well, that is, what's that, 47. And then it says that the weight is 1.5 kilograms per meter. So the weight is going to be 1.5 multiplied by 47. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 47 multiplied by 15, and then I'll put the decimal point back in. So 7 fives are 35, 4 fives are 20, add on the 3 is 23, 1 times 7 and 1 times 4. Let's put this here so that I've got a wee bit more space. And we get a 5, 7 and 3 is, is 10, 4 and 2 is 6, and that is carrying the 1 is 7. So the weight is going to be not 705, but 70.5 kilograms. Let's double check that we've got this one correct. So, yep, there is the 70.5, and here's the method for doing Pythagoras that you've got right there. Okay, so again, it's in some kind of context, and we've got here some right angle triangle, and it says the shaded shape below is made from two of these triangles. Work out the perimeter of the shaded shape. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. Okay, so perimeter means I'm definitely going to want this 8, and this 8, and this 10. And I'm also going to want to know the length of that part. And then this is the weird part. This is this like extra part at the bottom. Now you don't need to do this part in here because that's inside the shape. Perimeter is obviously just on the outside. So I'm going to begin by calculating this part, which is going to be the square root of 8 squared plus 10 squared. I'm going to put that on my calculator. So I'm going to do the square root of 8 squared plus 10 squared. And because it's going to be to three significant figures, if I do a couple of decimal points, that'll be fine. So that's 12.81. So this is 12.81, 12.81 millimetres. Now this red part that we've got here, this red part is the 12.81 minus this part of the triangle. Now this part of the triangle that we've got here is 10 millimetres. So if this is 10 and the whole thing is the hypotenuse, which is 12.81, I can calculate that by doing the 12.81 minus the 10. 
which is going to give me 2.81 millimeters. So the perimeter of this shape that we're looking for is going to be the 8, the 8, the 12.81, the 2.81, and the 10. So I'm just going to add all of those things together to find out what the perimeter is. The perimeter is going to be equal to all of those added. Let's put the calculator over here. So I have 8 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12.81 plus 2.81, which is going to be 41.6, and that's to three significant figures. So that is 41.6 millimetres. I think that red part is probably the trickier part in this question. Let's double check we've got it right. Yep, there's the 41.6. Now we're going to try them where they are mixed with areas of circles. And this one, I've actually done like a video that's on this one as well. This was a, if you look on my homepage, there's a bit called blended topics and I can kind of teach you this in a little bit more detail. But for now, we're just going to see how this one goes. So it says a square with side length X is inside a circle. They didn't give you a diagram, which I think is a little bit unfair, really. So I'm going to just start off by drawing a circle. Wow, I don't know why it came out green like that. Let's try and draw this again. That's better. And it says that a square is inside a circle. So when I try and draw a square that is inside this, I have such wobbly hands when I do this. This isn't too bad as a drawing. Yeah, it could probably be a bit better, but that's not too bad. And it says that the square has side lengths x. The area of the circle is 49 centimeters squared. Work out the value of x. OK, so I think what we need to do is put a centre on this. And I think we might try and use the fact that the area of the circle is 49. Because if I can work out how long the radius is, then maybe that will help me to work out what else is going on to try and find out what x is. Because I might then come up with some kind of right angle triangle. So I'm going to begin with the fact that we know that the area is pi r squared. And I know that the area is 49. So 49 is equal to pi r squared. So I'm going to do 49. I'm going to divide it by pi to get what r squared is equal to. And then I'm going to do the square root of 49 divided by pi to find out what the radius is. Take all of that. Let's put it down here so that I've got enough space. So I can do all of that on my calculator. I'm going to do the square root of 49 over pi. And that is, I'll do it to a few decimal places. The radius is 3.9493, blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm going to do this next part of this. I'm going to draw this triangle to help us see if we can use that to find out what x is equal to. Now, when I draw that triangle that I've got here, I have got that this is an x and this is an x. And this part is the diameter. It is two lots of this one. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to multiply it by two, and it's going to give me that hypotenuse that we've got there. Now I'm going to just quickly make sure I've got that here. So I'm going to multiply that answer by two. And so the hypotenuse is 7.8986586. I'm doing a few decimal places so that when I do the rounding at the end, it's always going to be good. Now here's where Pythagoras comes in because I have a right angled triangle. Looking at this right angled triangle that I've got right here, which is the same one that was highlighted in yellow, I'm going to do the fact that x squared plus x squared is equal to 7.89865, I probably don't need that many numbers, squared. So the left hand side is 2x squared and the right hand side is going to be the 7.89865 which I've got down here on my calculator. So I'm going to square that answer. And so 2x squared is 72.388, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to find out what x squared is by now halving my answer. So x squared is 31.19, blah, blah, blah. And my last step is to do the square root of that answer. So I am going to now do the square root of the 31.19. And so it gives me that x is equal to 5.59 centimetres. And that is two, three significant figures that we've got there. OK, let's double check to see that we've got this one correct. We do have the 5.59. OK, we've got another example of Pythagoras with this time the area of the circle. I think it's a little bit easier than the previous one. It says the diagram shows a right angle triangle and a quarter circle. Well, clearly there's the quarter circle and here's the right angle triangle. The right angle triangle has an angle ABC, which is 90. The quarter circle is center C and has radius CB. OK, so that's worth knowing here that this is the radius. Work out the area of the quarter circle. 
give your answer to three significant figures and you must show all your working. Well, it's going to be a Pythagoras question, right? This triangle that I've got right here is just an example of Pythagoras. And this time when you're finding out what R is equal to, we're actually looking for a shorter side. So it's going to be a subtracting. It's going to be a 9 squared minus 6 squared. I'm going to type that in my calculator. So I'm going to do the square root of 9 squared minus 6 squared. And you can either write that as 3 root 5, or we can write it as 6.708. In fact, I might even show you what this is. If I do it without the square root sign, if I just do my 9 squared minus 6 squared, it's the square root of 45. So it is the square root of 45. Now, the reason I'm doing just the value of r for a second is because in a minute, I'm going to be doing r squared for the area of the circle, or the area of the quarter circle. So we could say root 45. We could also have done it as a decimal. And root 45 is 6.708, or we could say it's 3 root 5. But this is probably the one I'm going to use. So the area of the quarter circle, well, the area of a normal circle is pi times the radius squared, but because it's a quarter circle, I'm going to divide it by 4. So I've already got this on my calculator, so it's going to be pi multiplied by the root 45, all squared, divided by 4. I'm literally just going to type this in. Now remember I've got the root 45 stored in my answer, so I'm going to do as a fraction, I'm going to do pi times by my answer squared, because that's the radius squared, divided by 4, and then got my answer here, I press equals, and I'll do SD. So it wants it to three significant figures, it's going to be 35.3, so it's 35.3 metres squared, because the whole question is in metres. And there is our 35.3 that we've got. Obviously, if you wrote this down as a decimal, you'd just type the decimal in here instead. But that's perfectly fine the way that I've done it. Now, this is a hard question. It's question 21, so it's right near the end. That's why I've said it's a challenging one. The diagram shows three identical circles inside a rectangle. Each circle touches the other two circles and the side of the rectangle as shown in the diagram. The radius of each circle is 24. Work out the area of the rectangle, giving your answer to three significant figures. Well, I'm going to do the easiest part of this question to begin with. And the easiest part of this question is to work out how wide the rectangle is. Well, it's a radius, a radius, a radius, and a radius. So this bit at the top is just going to be 4 lots of 24. And 4 times by 24, it is a calculator paper, so I might as well do it on here. 4 times 24 is 96. So this is 96 millimetres. Now I'm going to do the rest of this, trying to work it out downwards. Well, downwards, I've definitely got a radius here, and I've got a radius here, but this kind of other vertical distance that I've got in between them is a lot harder to work out. Now the way that we do this is kind of sneaky. We've got a radius here, and a radius here, and if I was going to try and find out this part, which is really the thing that I'm looking for, because I know this part, it's a radius, which is 24. I know this part, which is a radius, which is 24. If I can find out that part, then I've actually got the height. I've got the 24, that bit, and that bit. It would be the same as the height or the, the, the length of that rectangle. So I'm going to try and find out what that question mark is. And to find out what that question mark is, I'm going to use this yellow triangle. Now with this yellow triangle, I'm hoping that we can tell it is this section is going to be a 24. So when I draw that yellow triangle, there's a 24 there. The hypotenuse is a radius and a radius. So this is a 24 and this is a 24, meaning that it's a 48 over here. And the part that I'm looking for, this must be a right angle because this is uh, perpendicular to it. So this is the thing that I'm looking for over here. I'm going to call it h height that I'm looking for. So the height is going to be the square root of 48 squared, and I'm looking for a shorter side, so I'm going to be subtracting 24 squared. So I'm going to do the height, which is going to be the square root of 48 squared minus 24 squared, and that is 41.569. I'm just doing a few different uh, few numbers after the decimal point there. So now I can actually find out what the height of it is going to be. Well, it is going to be for this point that we've got. I might do that on the other side so that I have a bit more space for it. It is going to be a 24, which is this bit, 
another 24 at the bottom, and it's also going to be the value of h, which is 41.569, 41.569. I'm going to add all of that up together and see what I get. So I've already got the 41.569 on my calculator, so I'm going to add a 24 and a 24 to it, and I get that it is 89.569 millimetres. So my last step is to work out the area of the rectangle. And so the area of the rectangle is my 89.569, and I'm going to multiply that by 96 to get the area, and it just wants it to three significant figures. So I've already got that on my calculator. I'm going to multiply it by 96, and to three significant figures, well, not three significant figures. If I just do it to the nearest whole number, 8599 or 8598 point something, 8598 point, what did we say it is, 645, to three significant figures, drawing the line after the 8, it would make this bit round up to 860, so it's 8600 millimetres squared. Let's double check we've got this one, yep, 8600 millimetres squared, and they do let you have a range of answers depending on what kind of rounding you might have done. So I think Pythagoras started off kind of easy. They definitely got a lot more challenging in this part, particularly when we got circles involved. Um, and like I said, Pythagoras does pop up in other places, but this is the only times I've seen it where it is like mainly Pythagoras that I think is going on. Um, if you found this useful, please do like the video. It helps other people find this video as well and for them to do better in their GCSEs. Um, if you've got any friends that are doing it as well, you know, do share this with them and make sure you're subscribed to the channel because there's going to be lots of other updates coming soon.